Good afternoon. My name is James K. Holder II. Some of you may know me as Sir James II. I'd like to welcome you back to Not On My Watch. As always, I'd like to ask you to subscribe, like, comment, and share. I want you to retweet this and repeat this. If you're watching, today is March 1st, 2018, and I'd like to send a special, very happy, happy Women's History Month to everyone out there in the world. Um, I'd also like to thank all of you for celebrating along with me on my Instagram account, The Living Black History, um, including the Trivia Challenge. It was a lot of fun. I learned a lot, and I hope you all did as well. Uh, without further ado, I just want to jump into what is going on in the world, and the world seems to be slightly centered on the state of Georgia. These One of the biggest elections that I will be following this year is the Georgia gubernatorial race. Um, and that is the one in which I am basically supporting uh, the Democratic candidate, Stacey Abrams, for the position of governor. Um, if elected, she will be the first, I want to say she'll be the first woman to be the governor of the state of Georgia, and certainly the, the first black woman. So that is a big deal, and I definitely want to follow along with that race. Um, so please look forward to future coverage of that. Um, on this show. The other thing I want to point out is that she will, she, if she gets the nomination for the uh, Democratic primary, which happens on May 22nd, 2018, uh, she will be competing against one of the Republican candidates. Now, there are two uh, Republican candidates for this post. One is Casey Cagle, uh, the other is Brian Kemp. Both of these guys are pretty much as slimy as it can get. If you were following along last year, you know that um, there was a lot of uh, controversy with the Georgia 06 race and ballots and uh, just uh, voting records along with that. That had been uh, discarded, destroyed, however you want to phrase it. That happened on Brian Kemp's watch. Brian Kemp is currently the Secretary of State of the state of Georgia. Uh, Many civil rights activists, again, we talked about this on uh, season one of Not On My Watch, uh, the state of Georgia versus the resistance, where we had Ense Ufat on as a guest, who was the executive director of the um, New Georgia Project. Now, Ense was one of the plaintiffs in a suit against the state of Georgia, i.e. Brian Kemp as the Secretary of State, who was trying to restrict the new voter registration deadline for the runoff um, ballots. So now we have a system where Brian Kemp, a member of the, the GOP, who has actively shown that he's willing to be an agent of voter suppression, active voter suppression, targeting race, uh, targeting class in the state of Georgia. So that's a big problem because as a candidate, he still holds power and as an elected official currently, he holds the power to influence the way people are going to be able to vote for him uh, or one of his Republican counterparts when it gets to November. So that's something we're definitely going to be keeping an eye on. And it's all started up very recently. I mean, it, I mean, not even recently, it's been going on. So while we're discussing all the issues of gun rights and gun legislation, there's just so many things that we must keep an eye on, we must remain focused on, and we can't be discouraged or distracted uh, as it comes to the major fights in securing the blue wave this year. Casey Cagle. Now, he is the current um, lieutenant governor of the state of Georgia. And Casey Cagle made headlines this week because he had the audacity, the caucasity, to point out to Delta Airlines. Now, let's, let me just do a little backstory here. I've been frustrated in watching the response of all of the major corporations or of the, the Twitter influencers, uh, most of whom are white men, uh, who are praising and lauding the actions of major corporations for severing their uh, special privilege opportunities and packages for NRA members. And I have to wonder 
How long have we known collectively as a country that the NRA has been a toxic force in our politics? That we've known they've been nefarious, we've known they've been behind uh, different laws that disenfranchise all Americans, not just black people. I mean, you talk about behind stand your ground laws, behind all these other types of legislation that riddle the South um, and, and invoke rampant racism in the way that our government structures, our courts, everything works. The NRA has been chief behind all of those things. And so my thing is, I'm not going, I, I never would have taken the position that I'm not going to shop at a grocery store because they offer a discount to NRA members or that I'm not going to fly an airline because they offer a discount to NRA members or I'm not going to rent a car from a company because they offer a discount to, to NRA members. I think we all have different organizations that we're a part of. I'm a AAA member, so AAA is always trying to offer me a discount to rent a car. Whether I need one or not, they're always trying to offer me a discount on Amtrak or whatever. So I think those types of links in terms of boycotting a company because they have a special relationship with another private or public organization, to me, that's just not my MO. But it's frustrating when you have a group of people who are in mass promoting and celebrating and, and, and vowing to spend more money with companies who are severing ties with toxic organizations that really and truly, they never should have had those ties with in the first place. Um, I digress. Delta Airlines, which just has a, which is the hub of um, Atlanta Hartsfield Jackson uh, International Airport, uh, AKA Hartsfield Latoya Jackson uh, Intergalactic Space Hub and Nail Emporium, which is I like to call it. We have to be mindful that Delta has sort of a fine line to walk and they kind of don't. The airline industry has changed so much over the time that Delta has been a major influencer and employer in the state of Georgia that it's really hard for me to now say, okay, because Delta had the NRA connection for God knows how long, am I going to stop flying Delta because of that? No. Also, Delta offers the most direct flights from Georgia to anywhere else in the world or from Atlanta to anywhere else in the world. So in terms of my ability to travel safely and within a reasonable amount of time and at a reasonable price, Delta tends to be the only option or they provide a lot of competitive rates that keep other airlines more affordable within the region. I digress. I say all that to say I wouldn't be boycotting Delta even if they didn't end their, their uh, royalty program to uh, be NRA. But this week, uh, Casey Cagle um, exercises, uh, who is the, again, the Lieutenant Governor of Georgia, has come out and said, uh, let me quote this tweet that he posted. Why can we talk about the nature of just uh, elected officials announcing policy via Twitter? Can we just stop that as a, can we just end it? Because it's really not professional. It's really not anything that should be encouraged. Uh, even though I get that Twitter is a good way to get a message out, it, but it's just really not official enough for you to take a position that way because you can't hold some, anyway, whatever. Donald Trump, I'm looking in your direction. Uh, this is Casey Cagle on Tuesday. I will end any tax legislation that benefits Delta unless the company changes its position and fully reinstates its relationship with the NRA. Corporations cannot attack conservatives and expect us not to fight back. Now, this is incredibly problematic and it set off a buzz on Twitter storm. The tweet itself, now, the tweet got 34 retweets, I mean, 34,000 retweets uh, since it was posted on, uh, excuse me, Monday, the, uh, February 26th uh, at 2.02 p.m. Now, but it got like 60,000 replies since then. So people aren't happy about this tweet. Um, again, when your tweets, if for those of you who don't know, if you tweet something and it gets twice as many replies as it gets retweets or likes, it's probably a really, really, really bad take and you should probably delete it. Uh, for some reason, Casey Cagle has not deleted this tweet. Um, I think Casey Cagle is trying to shore up his Republican support in Georgia, which really isn't a poor strategy for someone running in an election, especially against someone as slimy as Brian Kemp, uh, who is the current Secretary of State in the state of Georgia. Uh, now, it's problematic because if Delta Airlines decides they're not gonna offer a discount to NRA members anymore, that's one thing. And it's completely separate from D D Delta saying, if you're an NRA member, we're not gonna allow you to fly on our planes. 
if you are black or if you are white or if you voted for Donald Trump, we're not going to allow you to, to fly on our planes. But it's really the same thing, is it not? So that is kind of where, where we are with, with this position. Um, you've got companies who are now trying to take a stand against uh, the NRA and sort of certain forms of gun sales because we see that our elected officials, especially the Republicans, are simply not going to take any meaningful stand against uh, gun violence in this country. They're not going to go for a ban on bump stocks. They're not going to go for a ban on assault rifles. They're not going to go for a ban, a ban on, um, you know, people of the age to buy a gun being 18, I mean, being 21 as opposed to 18. And so you've seen uh, companies like Kroger, who I didn't even know they had affiliates that sold guns, uh, especially to people under 21. Uh, you've seen uh, Dick's Sporting Goods. Again, I didn't know Dick's Sporting Goods sold guns, or at least they didn't, I didn't know they sold or AR-15s until they said they weren't going to sell them anymore. Fine. Now you've got all these people on Twitter saying, oh, I'm going to go spend money at Dick's Sporting Goods because they stopped selling AR-15s. But they shouldn't have been selling AR-15s anyway. Like, they, why were... Sporting... A, a, an AR-15 is not a sporting good. It's not a hunting gun. You cannot go and, and hunt deer with an AR-15. You can't. No one with the, in the, their right mind would do that. So why are you rewarding a store that for years has gotten away with this horrible practice, this really dangerous practice, of selling guns, these types of guns that really should have been banned anyway, that you're going to now reward this company for now taking an opposite stand that's popular. That doesn't make any sense to me. And I think that should stop online. But beyond that, we've got to hold our elected officials accountable. And I think this May 22nd date is the perfect opportunity to tell Casey Cagle to shove his tweets up his asshole and to tell Brian Kemp to shove his conflicted, conflicted ballots up his asshole with all of his voter suppression and um, trying to keep people from being able to vote in the state, trying to dis destroy evidence of potential voter tampering or hacking that elects people uh, to the Georgia 6th that, that maybe the, the, uh, the district didn't vote for. This election is our opportunity, Georgia. So we're going to be following that. And it might be in a separate podcast. I'm toying with the idea of doing a bi-weekly podcast. We'll see. Um, I can barely get this show out on time. So I thank you all for watching and being patient. Um, but, you know, I, I'm in the camp that I believe that the, the companies coming on board now to stop the sales and take away the NRA discounts are a little bit too little too late. But Certainly, if you all want to reward that behavior, that's, I would say, go for it. I'm not going to counter change. Um, so let's see. Also in Georgia. Now, yesterday, I did not uh, follow this story very closely, but there was a, an active shooter situation at a school in Dalton, Georgia, which is, um, I guess, maybe about 80 miles north of Atlanta, maybe 80 miles, 85 miles north of Atlanta. Um, so it's not Atlanta news, really, it, but it is kind of because it's Georgia. So um, I didn't follow it very closely, but there was a situation where a teacher basically locked himself in a classroom and began to shoot. The teacher got into custody, but it's just kind of like, OK, Donald Trump, this is what happens when teachers show up to schools with guns. Can we stop pretending like that's a good idea? Can we stop throwing out these random ideas, these, these tweet policies? That's not policy. You aren't hired and paid by the government and paid by uh, the citizens to throw out random ideas as if you're pulling out sheets from a Kleenex box and they're written on them or opening up fortune cookies and they're written. You have to take into account the possibilities, facts, data, public opinion, yes. But ultimately, what's happening in our country is a dangerous situation that isn't new. It's not new. In Florida, it's not new in Georgia. It's not new anywhere around here. What, what, what is April 20th? Doesn't April 20th mark the, um, either the, uh, the, the, the 19th or the 20th anniversary of Columbine? And we're here having this conversation about potentially arming uh, teachers? 
doesn't make any sense to me, and it shouldn't make any sense to you. So these elections that are coming up, these special elections, uh, these primaries, uh, these, these midterms in November, these are our opportunity to finally put an end to this moronic dialogue in our country about guns that doesn't serve anyone except the gun lobby. Um, I want to talk about a couple of other things that are going on in Georgia, because again, Georgia tends, seems to be a center of focus of foolishness in this country right now. Um, we've got a situation where a bill in the, the, um, the Georgia Senate, state Senate, has passed that would ban or it basically wouldn't restrict um, adoption agencies from banning uh, gay and lesbian couples from adopting children. Now, why is this important? This is a huge step back, not only in the civil rights um, arena, but also just in terms of family law, family safety, um, the economy, and also we're looking at the welfare of just children. What does it mean when children who are in this system, this foster care system, uh, have fewer opportunities to, to be loved by adoptive parents. You know, I, I, I really fully believe if you put it to these kids who are in these house, these, um, these, this foster care system, would they rather be in a foster care system? Would they rather be shuffled around from, from uh, you know, house to house? Some of them split up from their brothers and sisters, or would they, be, would they rather be in a loving home with a same-sex uh, set of parents? I don't know how many of those kids would say, Nine nah, with that LGBTQ mess, you got to put me with a straight family. I just, I don't, I, that seems unrealistic to me. And I really believe that we have to get past this. We have to get past this culture of restricting reproductive rights, forcing women to bear children that they maybe can't afford to have, and they didn't even choose to conceive. They might have been raped, whatever. And then adding to that more restrictions on foster care and who has the opportunity to take care of these children. The Republicans barely wanted to refund, uh, uh, to fund CHIP for another uh, 10 years. In fact, they didn't refund it for 10 years, and that was the most affordable way to refund it. They refunded it for like six years. So it really is just unconscionable what's going on. And on top of the fact that you had this bill that passed in the Senate, now it has to go to the House and be passed there, and then it has to be uh, approved uh, or signed by the governor who, you know, do I expect this person to, to do right by the, the, the LGBT families in the state? No, I don't. So again, it all comes back to these choices that we're making in the special elections, the primaries, and the midterm elections because some of these things are going to land where we have an option to specifically have an impact on where those votes go and where those opportunities for families go. Now, this is only compounded by the fact that in uh, this week also, Governor, I mean, not Governor, uh, Vice President Mike Pence has come out and said on record that uh, abortion, legal abortion will be banned in our time. Now, or he's going to do all that he can to end legal abortion in our time. Now, we've seen where uh, one of the first uh, executive orders that Donald Trump signed when he became president, I mean, within the, week, the weekend before he went off to Mar-a-Lago that weekend, was to end the Mexico City rule, which basically then said that the US government would ban or restrict funding for uh, foreign aid to countries that didn't ban uh, abortion. Really horrible, right? So now we've got that one thing going on. There's been other strides. To, they try to ban, uh, put a ban on 20-week abortions uh, in, the, in the Congress at the, at the federal level. Just last month. Well, not last month, but now January. Um, it passed in the House. It didn't pass in the Senate. It barely didn't pass in the Senate. So, I mean, the clock is ticking on this stuff because we really, really have to be concerned when you have a party that won't do any meaningful legislation to, to prevent 
gun violence against our students in high schools, elementary schools. Their solutions are to arm teachers. They don't want to pay teachers more. They don't want to put you know, trained uh, psychologists or psychiatrists in the school system to help identify some of the markers of, of these, uh, 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 these uh, assailants. Their, go their goal is to give more access and more power to the gun lobby. Then you want to take it back a step further and say, we're not even going to provide a forum for students who are born uh, and then given to the, over to the adoption system, given over to the foster care system to be adopted by certain types of families, more discrimination, more restrictions on that. And then you're going to now take away access to legal abortions for women, safe and legal abortions for women to be able to plan their families and now is forcing more children into this system. It, and you don't want to fund their health care either through programs like CHIP. Doesn't make sense to me. I don't have the documentation in front of me, but there's also been, just today, there's a push within the GOP to end funding for programs that provide uh, heating access, uh, provide uh, resources for poor families to heat their homes in the wintertime uh, through energy. And, and I'm sure this is a different thing in different states. I believe in Georgia, in, uh, you know, Georgia, the way heating works is different than the way it works in uh, places like New York. Um, but you got to wonder what that all is about. Why is this company, I mean, why is this party so adamant about pushing all these policies that ultimately hurt families? What is that about? I don't know. But you have to ask yourself, those of you who still vote for this party, those of you who don't vote against this party, where you stand on, this, on these positions, because they all come down to the bottom line of hurting people who have less. And that should not be something that any of us continues to support moving forward. We've seen the damage that it's done. Um, I want to wrap this up by talking about the fact that um, the counter, the cooking series, is resuming this month. Now, I began uh, taping new episodes. Um, I was going to start taping like full episodes uh, last weekend. I decided to do an approach of promoting a, um, a series of demos. Now, these demos will be about 12 minutes to 15 minute long videos that show you how to do the 10 minute morning, money saving morning routine. And so the idea is that if you take 10 minutes out of your morning to uh, cook this breakfast, basically a breakfast, a prepared packed lunch, uh, and um, a, a coffee or hot beverage for your day, you can save $10 or more um, that you would have spent if you bought all three of those items out near your office or place of business or if you took you got them for takeout. And they're really easy recipes. Some of them are vegan recipes. Uh, and you should be able to cook them all in about 10 minutes, depending on you know how you approach uh, the different recipes. So I definitely invite you to check those out. The first demo is already up um, on this YouTube channel, uh, which is a uh, www.holderstudio.com. If you visit www.thecountertv.com, it will take you directly to that video. Um, I plan to upload three more demos before we uh, release the first full episode of the show, to count The Counter, which will again resume the specific discussion with guests about food access issues. And also, uh, you know, it all talks about reducing your salt intake, making sure that you have heart healthy recipes kidney-friendly recipes, uh, protein-rich recipes, healthy, fat-rich recipes, uh, you know, ways to definitely control any aspect of your diet that you want to focus on within a reasonable budget. And, uh, and it really is an, uh, an invaluable resource, especially as we get into a climate where uh, the GOP continues to force different policies that are taking away access to uh, SNAP benefits, WIC, um, and other nutritional resources for our families. So that is the purpose of the counter. I hope you'll continue to join me there uh, as we explore those issues and make sure that we're, we're equipping our families in America with the tools we need in case of emergency, in case of just regular food droughts, I mean, water droughts and food shortages or whatever it might come about, that you have the knowledge and the know-how to feed your family uh, within a reasonable budget, healthy alternatives, and not just relying on fast food or processed food. So please continue to support that. 
Um, I am looking for sponsorship for that show. So if you watch the show, if you watch this show, I am looking for producer level sponsors or hero level sponsors. Again, producer level sponsors are those who give $100 uh, to the show in exchange to have their names presented in the credits for the entire season of the show. Um, same with hero level sponsors. That's if you give it the $500 level. I know $500 is a lot, um, but I do run all of these shows uh, free to watch and ad free wherever they're hosted, whether it's on Facebook, whether it's on YouTube, and also there's potential for these shows to be hosted on the Exodus platforms. So once uh, the View Hub uh, platform is up and running, uh, I'll definitely be setting up a channel there. And I definitely wanna offer some specific content to different users in different uh, areas, but I really hope that you all will continue to support, continue to watch, and look forward to the content because there's some important issues going on and I wanna keep you all uh, up to date and abreast of what's really important, especially as it relates to what's going on in the resistance right here in Georgia. Without further ado, I will thank you all for watching. Again, I'd like to ask you to like, share, comment, and subscribe, retweet, and repeat this. And I first, before signing off, want to thank our friends of the show. Now, this is anyone who is given to the link above, the www.paypal.me slash jkh2 link. Um, and has uh, given a dollar or more to that link. If you'd like to be a sponsor and you don't have PayPal, you can always um, send uh, an Amazon gift card uh, to jkh2photo at gmail.com, an Amazon e-gift card, and that helps me buy light bulbs, uh, coffee, um, batteries for the mics, you name it. Different things that I need to make sure that we keep the, the program going and flowing and consistent and, in, and steadily improving. So I appreciate all the support with that. Um, today I'd like to thank Barry G, Lynn M. I'd like to thank Elizabeth C as always. I'd like to thank Torin W. I'd like to thank Pleiades M. I'd like to also thank Sumi B and Courtney H. And again, if you'd like to become a friend of the show, please donate $1 or more to the link above. If you'd like to become a producer level sponsor, please donate $100 or more to the link above. And if you'd like to become a hero level sponsor or shero level sponsor in the spirit of Women's History Month, uh, please donate $500 or more to the link above to be uh, included in the, the credits for the counter series for the entire second season uh, when it launches in uh, at the end of this month. As always, I'd like to thank you for watching. I'd like to ask you to relax, relate, and resist. Too complex, much too complex, too complex, much too complex, too complex, too 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 complex, too 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 complex.